Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tales from the GIS. This is your host Edward Roccatello and today I'll talk to you about the new version of QGIS called name Lima and uh, with version 3.32. Uh, I will use the user method, so uh, we will see the visual change along and I command it uh, with you. So, let's start. The greatest change in this version is actually the LiDAR processing. And this version, in fact, includes the native point cloud uh, processing. And it means that QGIS will be, for now and the future, uh, one of the best editor for LiDAR point clouds. So let's start with the visual change log. Okay, let's start with the map tip preview the new feature, then you can actually see the preview of the map tips and directly in the editor. This is really useful if you want to have visual feedback. Also, in QGIS 3.32, you can um, copy coordinates from the uh, the measure and you can uh, the measure tool and you can choose between Cartesian or ellipsoidal uh, method to have the coordinates where uh, it has been uh, taken and the measure has been taken. So yeah, it's really useful um, for me actually. <laughs> I hope it is also for you. Let's go forward. <clears throat> Let's move forward and um, another nice feature is that you can disable the map tips for a specific layer. You can do it you know, just using a, a, a click when you can set or unset the enable map tips. A lot of changes. Also, you can show the value in the description. Uh, when you have a uh, attached data source on a property of the, the data, obviously, you you see the value in the drop down. But if you hover with the mouse, uh, you can have the description as a tip. Uh, another nice thing is the remove from color to use CRS, so you don't need to clear it all anymore. You can uncheck the uh, just a single uh, CRS. Not really, not really a breaking change, but useful for the routine work. Bonus tip: you can now um, reverse the direction of the wheel zoom. This is uh, uh, nice when you are working on uh, the Mac platform, which has had uh, a reverse um, method for the wheel. So you can check it as a reverse and it works like in other operating system. Uh, you can have the rotation in the spatial bookmarks. Nice addition. The annotation tool have the um, option to edit and delete directly from the tooltip. Uh, also, you can have the live preview of the annotation, so you can set the HTML annotation. You see um, the update on the annotation itself okay and now the nice things uh, you can render the point cloud in 3d views uh, you will see the um, piling uh, if you are out and moving forward you will see the point cloud rendered this is really really powerful and nice also, the 3D measure tools has been improved 
and it really works nicely and uh, you can actually uh, work with uh, with things um, uh, before this release it wasn't so good but now you can also um, work with the vertical distance the horizontal distance and then uh, you will get the 3d distance uh, and a lot of settings which is really nice to to have and now with this release QJS has been improved a lot on LiDAR processing it includes uh, the PDAL wrench as a tool and you can actually have a front end to, to that so now you can do a lot of processing for LiDAR data directly in QJS you can convert to format, you can export to raster or to vector and the data management also has been implemented so you can assign a projection to build a virtual point cloud which is supported in the visualization you can clip, you create a cloud oriented cloud <coughs> you can create a cloud oriented uh, point cloud you can have information, merge a project or you can thin um, a point cloud using the sampling radius or the skipping points and also you can tile the entire LiDAR data and it, this is really useful if you have to uh, work with large uh, data set also you can extract the boundary the density and you can filter the point cloud extraction everything is a front end to pedal branch so using pedal you can actually do a lot of things pedal is a great uh, ladder processing library but it's not really easy to use so they built a front end a console a console line interface actually a cli uh, it's called pedal wrench and now uh, QJS uh, implements it in uh, a nice uh, way. Okay, now another thing that has been uh, implemented is that you can have um, common angle um, options for advanced digitizing, so uh, you can snap to common angles and this is uh, nice because you have a lot of presets and you have to do it manually before that so it's really really nice and uh, also you can set the priority for snapping now oh, another nice thing is the floater for advanced digitizing which uh, help you to have an idea of what you're doing so once uh, you are doing a digitization, you have the um, distance, the angle, the axis in the Y, the bearing you are working on. And it is really useful uh, to have that. Uh, you can have the floater with X, Y coordinates. So you have the, the things you have here, uh, you can have it directly on the map. And it's nice. One thing uh, it, which is really nice if you work with the different setups and you need to have a toolbar uh, organized in uh, various ways is the profile selector and you can create and select the profile directly in QJS uh, you can actually configure your instances of QJS for project and uh, for instance I have a, a profile for my mm, channel here it is from the JS uh, another one which I use um, when I need to work for real with QJS so uh, this is a really nice feature so, Okay. For developers, uh, we 
have a really nice introduction here, which is the QJS TCP socket sensor. You can define a sensor and you can fetch data using the, the sensor. So you can, uh, for instance, update a temperature sensor uh, using Python. And you can see the update on the map based on that sensor. This is really nice if you have IoT and you want to build, for instance, a dashboard, or you can want to update a map fetching the data. Mm, let's think about the weather. And uh, you need to produce the daily map of the weather in a particular moment. So you can run the script, every, every label gets updated, and you actually have a uh, an updated map with all the widgets uh, already styled and so on. So you don't need to um, have a lot of work to be done manually. Okay, you have in the project, you have the, the sensors um, option. You can have a lot of sensors. So, okay. Uh, okay. Another great change about the, uh, the LiDAR is the introduction of a new provider, which is the Virtual Point Cloud Data Provider. And it uh, helps you to uh, move on the map with efficiency. It works in 2D and 3D. And it's really, really nice. As you can see here, you have the the old uh, um, virtual pod cloud with the tiles and the classification on the left. So you, if you zoom in, you get the point cloud. Otherwise, you will get just the boundary. With this new feature, with this new provider, I will end this video. Uh, this one has been a really nice mm, release. And uh, um, if you go to the website, I added the description here, you will see the uh, entire changelog, which is really large. And this is actually the um, main features that I think are really important. So thank you for listening. Please add a comment if you have any question or you want to request a new video with a specific theme. And thank you for listening.